things I'd like to talk in this video. Please excuse my dew drop, it's that time of year. It's what happens if you work outside. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about my pet hate, and that is thieves. People who steal. It's like taking stuff, just taking it. You know, identity, stealing your photographs and, and using them to make money or imply that you've done that work. Yeah. You know, uh, stealing things, you know? It's like all these thieves, or a lot of them, they don't target people with loads of money. They target people just like themselves or who they probably think are slightly better off than themselves. All because of money, mostly, because otherwise what's the point of doing it? You know, people pretending to be you, people pretending that's their art is, or their creation is what they've done. Or in the case of what goes on here, you know, you go to somewhere nice for a walk and people drive up, one, one ride in, one in tr charge of the motorcycle, the other one pillion, pillion jumps off, smashes your window, grabs anything they can find and off they go. That's what goes on. You know, so you have to be like really careful where you go, where you park, magic your vehicle. I hope I'm not saying this as mine's being done, but I have been wanting to do it for ages. Because, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. But I think vandalism comes into that as well. You know, I used to have, you know, because I only had certain times when I could see my kids. I lived in a place where regularly my wing mirrors were being smashed. And as I've got a van, you have to have, or whatever vehicle you've got in this country, you have to have your driver's side wing mirror. Otherwise you're illegal. So these people were coming along. Obviously, they went and smashing the, wind, the wing mirror, which, you know, used to cost me 50 quid every time to get it fixed. And, but not only that, it made me illegal in driving to see my son or my daughter. And I used to think, these people that are doing this, they've probably got issues because, you know, the parents don't get on or the parents are split up and they don't see their father very often. And there they are, perpetuating that, even though, you know, I was still going to see them. But, it's, you know, it's like the amount of stuff that they do. Whereas there are people with so much money, they wouldn't even notice stuff that they'd missed, that had been gone missing. Because they've got far too much anyway. But they don't get target, targeted. And then there are the thieves that, you know, <laughs> the people that make the money are often stealing off us, you know? Like they're not paying people a fair living amount to you know for them to work they're paying them under an amount to work so they have to work more in order to get that money i'm talking in generally you know it puts you in a position where you're forced to work extra like slaves and that's what we all are but thieves is something i've I, I can't stand, you know, if they're taking from people just like them and this low and lowest common denominator is what we all live on, you know, you get threatening letter from some, some company about your bill, like, or the council, 
even though you may have forgotten because you've got a life, you know? But they don't say it nicely. It'll be a threatening letter or it'll be steeped in language that is basically threatening. Rather than, we realise this may have been an oversight and if you could see your way through, you know, making a payment in the next seven days, then that will be fine and we won't need to take any further action or contact you again, you know? But no, they don't. It's like the language is of demand, so it's going to put your back up, isn't it? It's going to really piss you off, as it does. So everyone finds ways to get out of paying for stuff. But, you know, from talking to people in other parts of the world, you know, here in Britain, and I can't understand why any foreigners want to come to Britain. Because they don't want it to rain. They love the country, but they don't want it to rain so it can be like this. <laughs> you know? And yet, we're taxed for so many things that loads of other countries don't even have to do. It's like everything. There's a total control thing going on here. Like, really, really bad. And you know what? I can't find the root of it. I've thought about it a lot. I just want to share this with you while we do it. <laughs> Get that. Lovely, uh, kind of living and dead beach in there. Yeah, and I can't figure it out. Can't figure out why, why? Yeah, why isn't going on the rest of the world? Does it happen in America? Canada? Yeah, all these places. Do you mind if I call you Canada? Or would you rather I said Canada? I, I quite like Canada. You can call here Avalon. No. You can call here Albany. No, what is it? You can call here Albion, because it is. It is white, it is Middle Earth, it is all these places. So yeah, I've, you know, uh, I did have a, here's, here's an example. And this, you know, this can just ruin places for people. I, uh, when I was, what, about 20, 21, Obviously, I was in the state because the bean field had happened. My father had died, uh, and I you know, crashed my car, and I was in a bit of a limbo state. And we stayed in, or oh, I stayed in a place where the landlady lived in a squat in London, but she also had the house where she was, and she was a barrister, and she'd come down for the weekends and find parties and come back and then sleep with me because I had the settee <laughs> anyway one one day she brought this bloke back I think she I don't know whether she'd hitched back from a party or whether she'd just hitched back from London but anyway Wow, that's steep <laughs> and slippy. Hello, darling. Wanted to come and say hello. And uh, anyway, she brought back this bloke and let him crash for the night. Wow. Whew. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Even though that's tempting, isn't it? Lovely thing. Anyway, I woke up in the middle of the night. And the front door was open. The bloke had gone. So had my guitar and my leather jacket. 
and the line lady's leather jacket. Great, thanks mate. So that kind of thing stops you from, you know, just being nice to strangers, doesn't it? Obviously you try not to, not to let it affect you. And talking of stealing, <laughs> there's a quarry face that's uh, left from stone being stolen from the ground. Yeah, it's much easier to just tell the truth. Just be honest, it leads to less complications and knock-on effects. You know, I've known thieves in my life. It's not good. I mean, my friend, maybe you'll watch this. Uh, you know, he built up, he actually made his own PA system. Made it. You know, did all the circuitry put it all in boxes, you know, wired it all up, everything, everything for doing gigs. Because he's a sound engineer for you know, thousands and thousands of gigs for you know, lots of well-known bands. And he got his PA stolen, all of it. And then it turned out that there was a clause in the insurance that didn't cover someone breaking in through a roof. So he didn't get any money for it. So he built another one. And I can't remember what happened to it. I've got a feeling that that might have been stolen as well, but I'm, I'm not sure, so. Yeah, but even so, he still had to build another one, which is time energy, money, but he did it, so hats off to him. Anyway, that's the end of this, so yeah. Sorry to have to talk about it, really. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Ta-da.